Hello, Mikey. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, this is Errol. Um, this is Errol from London, England. Yes, yeah, I'm here with um, e boxing news. E boxing news. Yeah. Um, so how are things going, man? I think they're really, very well. Um, you know, we're just relaxing, waiting for a press conference later today. Um, we're we're doing uh, just the uh, weekly activities. Okay, okay, man. Um, you know what? Um, I, I was thinking to myself, yeah, like, um, obviously you're moving up a weight against the uh, against the opponent. Do you know much about him? Well, I've seen a, a few of his fights. Um, my dad and my brother are the ones that you know have uh, paid more attention to him and 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 coming up with the game plan for the fight. I just um, you know I've seen him, and from what I've seen, you know, he's, he's a tough, terrible guy um, who has a lot of heart and always fights you know to the very end and doesn't doesn't uh, give up easily, you know. Mm-hmm. Okay. E, e, e news. You have news for Mike. Uh, the question. So, yeah, yeah. So um. This is your first fight at the super featherweight division. How do you feel about fighting at that weight? Do you feel good at the weight? I feel good. I think I think I'm doing very well. Um, I feel fast. I feel strong. I don't think the uh, increase in weight will affect my performance. You know, coming fight night um, at all. I think I think it's, uh, it's a very good uh, option for me. A good move to uh, be fighting at 130 pounds this time, and we'll just um, see how I feel. At, you know, after the fight. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Definitely, definitely. Um, another question I was saying, then obviously, like um, you represent the Garcia and um, your brother. Um, oh, sorry, your brother. If your brother, <laughs> your brother, your yeah, older brother was the first one to get a champion. So you're going to be the first. Are you going to be the first one in your family to get uh, to be a two weight champion? Oh, right, sorry, you're two weight. Oh, champion. Yeah, go on. I hadn't even thought about that, but uh, you know, if, if Saturday night goes well for me, I will be uh, you know first one in the family to win two titles and. In different weight classes, but um, you know, I'm just making sure I do everything to win Saturday night. I mean, I, I'm just uh, focused on, on on the fight and um, just got to do what I got to do. Yeah, definitely, 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 man. And and also for the area as well, Oxnard as well. Like, um, obviously, I remember back in the days, um, Fernando Vargas and Robert they were doing their thing and uh, winning their belts, and and obviously for the academy and that, and also for the little, little kids coming up to see you, you're you're a great inspiration for the area and the local community. Not of an Oxnard. Yes, uh, Oxnard, you know, is, is uh, you know very big in boxing right now. You know, we've had a you know really good uh, a boxing history, and you know a lot of kids, you know, that that do see us and and, and uh, you know dream of and, and, and imagine and picture themselves one day being in our shoes. You know, that is a great inspiration for them to see you know so so many great fighters you know, in one gym. Um, right now in my brother's gym, we have you know a lot of a lot of great names. You know, Rios, mm. Radovich, my dad, uh, you know myself. But yeah, all all, all these uh, you know world champions. So it's, it's definitely great for them. Yeah, definitely, and and also your your uncle um, Danny as well, who who's, who trained um, Victor Ortiz for a while as well. Now your 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 family's a rich, deep rich in boxing history. Like I mean, I mean, how many other brothers? You got any other younger brothers coming up? Are you the last one? Because <laughs> you the last. Brother. Yeah, I'm, I'm the last brother. Uh, my oldest brother, Daniel, he boxed. Um, he, he, he's training a couple of fighters now. Mm. My brother, Robert, mm. you know him, you know, became world champion in 98. And mm. now he's, he's a, a world-class trainer. And, and I'm the last the last uh, brother, you know. Yeah, man. Obviously, your father must be very proud. Did your father used to box as well, Eduardo? He boxed a, a few times in Mexico, uh, more, mostly kind of just uh, exhibition, amateur competition. He never competed in any tournaments or, or any professional uh, fights, but uh, he did uh, practice a little as a kid. And then uh, when he got older, he decided to you know pay more attention in the training aspect of the sport. Yeah, man. I, I feel like uh, I don't know. Has, it, was he, has he ever been named Trainer of the Year? Because I feel like at the time when Robert was Robert was a champion. And obviously Fernando was a champion, you know. You could have should because you know you could should have got um, obviously trainer of the year. I know Robert's already got trainer of the year. Um, Eduardo never got that. Your dad never got that. I don't believe he was he was uh, named trainer of the year. He might have been uh, yeah. considered uh, a few. You know, when, when Fernando and Robert both, I mean, he made both of them world champion in the same year, yeah. ninety eight. Yeah, Robert. Robert in March and Fernando in December, so that year might have been a year that he might have been nominated or, mm. or considered. But I don't remember him uh, ever mm. winning that uh, that title. Okay then. Okay. Yeah. You go. You yeah. can go. Um, yeah. So <laughs> recently, recently you've been bought, you've been uh, training also with Alex Ariza. 
How have you been finding yeah. working with Alex? Uh, everything's been going really well with him. I think uh, um, the biggest uh, difference and then the biggest help that he's brought is the uh, the diet and, and the uh, structured uh, nutrition program that he brings uh, along. Um, most of the times, every other time, I, I would just you know stay away from the junk food and uh, and, and fatty foods and just make sure I eat healthy and and uh, not have to worry about making weight as much. So with the incident last time, we decided to bring Alex, you know, give us a good, you know, workout and, and diet plan that worked for me, that everything is designed, structured, portioned, measured, uh, timed, everything for me, for my body, for my weight, for my workouts, and that's been the biggest help. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, we spoke to Alex before and he's a great guy, so it's good to see you guys working together because I can see you guys being a good fit together. Mm. But um, just wondering, you are, uh, you know, you are American but of Mexican descent, right? Yes, yes. So, and you're fighting a Puerto Rican. Over here in the UK, we don't really understand the big thing between, you know, Puerto Rico and Mexico. Can you um, tell us what it is all about? <laughs> It's just uh, over the you know years um, in boxing, there's always been great fights between Puerto Rico and Mexico uh, fighters. Um, they've given some of the best fights, you know, most memorable fights are, are, are sometimes you know mostly between Puerto Rican fighters and Mexican fighters. And the rivalry just started, you know, back in the day. I guess a couple of fights, you know, between them and. Um, some Mexican uh, people dislike, you know, the, the fact that Puerto Ricans are a little more flashy and flamboyant uh, with with, with uh, their style of either fighting and, and, and just, you know, their the way they speak and everything. And likewise, you know, Puerto Ricans might dislike Mexicans for, for being just brawlers, you know, for known to be brawlers and, you know, less te technical fighters. Uh, Puerto Ricans are a little more refined fighters than Mexican fighters, and they just you know contradict each other, and they they be, you know they expect great fights from from Puerto Ricans and Mexicans every time they get in the ring together. So that's that's part of where the uh, rivalry between the two nations comes. Mm -hmm. That's great. That's great. Um, so let me ask about your sparring partners. Who have you got sparring? Is the Nito is the Nito Dene been been you been sparring with Nito Dene and when he, oh, yeah like who's your sparring partners? We we didn't spar Nonito because he was uh, sparring Southpaws uh, getting ready for Victor Chinian, so we didn't uh, get get in the ring together. But I I brought uh, different sparring partners. I started off uh, for the first uh, four weeks of training with uh, Vigeny Kravic, Um and I also brought in Saul Rodriguez from Riverside. Um, I had a couple guys there from LA and Pasadena come in and help me um, get some work in. Mm. Um, just just different guys to bring in a little bit of different styles to the uh, to the ring for me. Mm. How, how do you feel like your power in, in this weight class? Because you're extremely, in the upper, in the lower weight class, lower class, weight class you came from is quite powerful. Do you feel like your, your power is going to translate into this weight class? I know your hand speed is definitely going to be there. I think my power will be the same. I don't, I don't feel... Uh, any difference? I don't think I'm gonna gain much strength or, or lose strength, but um, I think uh, along with the power comes the fact that I'm also fighting a little bit bigger guy, and mm. and if if he can take a well a punch well, you know it, it may seem like my power is no longer there, but it, it just may be that he could take a better punch because he's also bigger. Mm -hmm. Also, um, one of the, one of the guys from over here, Ricky Burns, was the last guy to defeat him, and he, he basically <laughs> put a lot of pressure in him and broke his heart. I don't, obviously, I'm, I don't know if you if you can divulge um, your game plan or which uh, Robert has, has laid out for you. So well, obviously, you can't obviously <laughs> get to it exactly, but would you, like if you can anyway? Well, I, I just think that you know we're prepared for for not just one strategy. I, I think uh, we're ready for for many things. Uh, if the fight unfolds a certain way, where I have to pressure Rocky and and and, and really you know, change with him, then I'm, I'm prepared for that also. But if um, if it's to my advantage and to my best interest to fight at, at a distance where I'm able to stick and move, counter, uh, and just you know box a decision victory, then I'm I'm also ready for that. Um, I have seen some of his fights, and you know he, he is a very tough guy. And like I said, you know he's very resilient. He fights to the very very last uh, 
and and that's why you know I gotta be ready for for many many strikes and many game plans. Mm, definitely. Would you say um, this fight coming up is your signature fight to break through into the big time? Obviously, in the world right, because obviously people over here in Europe we're all talking about you over here. Is this one of your signature signature fights to to break through into the into the big money, into the big paydays? And what do you feel? Well, that probably all depends on how well I perform. If I perform very well and I fight, you know, the excellent fight, and then and maybe knock them out, you know. You know, make it very exciting. Exciting, then you know people might you know take a better interest in me now. But I, I don't, I don't look for that. I don't, I'm not here trying to make a statement where it has to be in this fight. Yeah. You know, actually, I'm make sure I win. And if uh, this fight may not be my most exciting fight or, or my best performance, you know, as long as I'm winning, I, I, I'm happy with my career, and maybe my next fight will be uh, more exciting and. and um, it'll it'll take me to the next level. Yeah, definitely. E news. Yeah, there's um a lot of decent opposition in the super featherweight division. Are you going to be sticking at this division, or are you going to be looking to leave it after this fight? Uh, I think we're we're very uh, comfortable here in this division. Um, but uh, if if uh, there's something at a uh, high weight class at 135 pounds where I feel very interested in and and I feel comfortable moving up in weight also, then I may move up um, maybe, you know, soon. But if if I feel comfortable at 130 and there's good interesting fights at 130, then I'm going to try to stay here for, for quite some, some time. Mm-hmm. Other than that, I was going to say, you know, if we take you out of the picture and we just ignore you for just a second, even though that's quite hard to do, the whole division's pretty much tied up by, you know, Japanese fighters. Would you be interested in going to Japan to fight? I would be. I would actually like to take a trip out there. You know, I'm here to see Japan as well. But um, it's really up to the promoters to, you know, figure out, you know, and and, and get the right matchmaking and and promoting the events. And if if the uh, the champions are from Japan and they're willing to work with uh, my promoter top rank, whether it is to come here or to go out there, I'm willing to go out there. It just has to be negotiated between the promoters. Mm-hmm. Definitely, man. I was watching your interview with Ellie Setback, and um, I saw your father, I saw Robert, and I think it was a, a media open day where you were getting your hair cut, and and you were sitting down, and you and there was I think there was a kid, and he was paralyzed and taking a picture in that night. We say, would you say you're a people's champion? You come, you come across to me like the people's champion, and you represent the people from you know. Go ahead. Maybe I mean that's it's wonderful for for people to really you know accept me and and and, and uh, you know really look look up to me and, and um you know really support me mm. that's that's wonderful you know that's that's amazing I, I still don't believe you know i still can't believe you know how, how much support i get um it was the open work out there and so many people showed up and i'm still thinking like that's for me you know all these people are here to see me train like they take time out of their their busy lives to come and see me train that's unbelievable to me still and i mean if, if they see me as as their champion regardless of belts and titles and you know opponents or whatever I, that, that's just great for me that's that's another championship victory for me in itself yeah definitely i mean obviously us over in the uk we're very interested that's why i obviously pursued to get an interview from you and obviously hopefully one day you maybe have to fight in the uk over here you know? how would you feel about that oh uh, yeah that, that definitely would be wonderful i'm actually you know, hoping you know, you know, not just uh, you know, fighting out there, but um, we were thinking of maybe setting up a tour where we go out there and do some training camp out there, just to you know, be out there and 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 give the European fans you know a chance to to be around and see me train and spar and and maybe like I said, maybe in a fight. Mm. Mm. Yeah, that'd be great. That'd be great, man. Oh well, uh, EU, so you got any other questions for Mikey? Well, uh, I think I'm all questioned out. I mean, the only other question I can really ask you, really, Mikey, is are you ready to go out and handle business? <laughs> We're definitely ready. We're going to be uh, the best uh, Mikey Garcia that you've seen probably in the, in the Saturday night. Okay. All right, and Mikey, man, we appreciate you giving your time, Mikey, and and we look forward to you look, to, look forward to your victory, victory being victorious, and um, we're we're trying to keep in contact with you soon, Mikey. Yeah. Thanks for thanks for your, your time. Yeah, thanks, Paul. Perfect, thank you. You're oh. welcome. Oh, no worries. Take it. Bye. 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 Bye.
Mikey. Mikey. 